Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back. Decent build planned for tonight. Um, it's kind of a spur of the moment thing, but something I was thinking about, and I don't know you guys will see the garden develop. I put out a video of what happened to the last garden, but you guys have also seen where we are with the current garden. Um, anyway, I have an idea for a side lighting, just a little bit of side lighting I want to add if the other side doesn't quite go into full effect. So I built up. Let's see if you can see it. Built up this right here. And what you will see on your side is you don't see anything um, except this driver and what looks to be a 80-20 piece of aluminum. And that's exactly what it is, um, except it's a slight special one. But as we flip it over, you can see we've got two photo boost strips on here. This is a 46-inch piece. Um, and we can really direct it anyway. We could build this so it goes down. We could build this so it goes this way. Currently, I have it obviously facing myself. Um, perfect little side lighting. It comes out to you know, get pushed to about 100 watts, more or less, of side lighting for that. Um, and it's exactly, exactly kind of what I wanted to build for my situation. But while I was building it, I was thinking, well, what happens? You know, that obviously shoots side light one way. So great for outside, like for my four by eight space, you know. Um, when we're walking down the 4x8 on that outside to have a couple of these on there, it'd be great. It'd be a good good filler. Um, hmm, chat's not working. Uh, good filler, work out great. So um, we'll see how that works. But anyway, it got me thinking of like, okay, how do we get it to shoot both ways? And it's simply, it's super easy. We're going to double it. And before I go any farther, what we were, uh, what we're building this whole thing off is it's a 10 series 80 20 or 10 series you know t slot extrusion um, but this one specifically has one flat side you'll see here and what 10 series means is it's one inch wide and that's exactly the same width as the photo boost strips so we're able to put a photo boost strip right on here got one already on one of these short ones here's a 23 inch piece with a single photo boost strip on there works great um, or like i said we can do it on uh, on a four foot strip multiple eight heat sinks eight strips four heat sinks this that and those are cool they work great they're kind of cookie cutter for a reason but you can do some outside the box things with this and i think this is one that'll work uh that'll work quite well and i might actually start seeing it pop up more places is my idea Okay, let me get caught up on chat real quick just to see what's going on, who's in here, because a lot of you were in here earlier. I apologize. As soon as I started setting this up, my wife came out and was like, hey, order Thai food. You need to pay the guy. Um, so my apologies about that. But yes, everyone's in here looking good. What drivers? That's the very, uh, that's a good question. So currently for my first, you know, for this concept design that I was doing. I had some ERP uh, PSBs, which is a programmable 50 watt driver, and that's what this is right here. This is a 850 milliwatt 56 volt thing, so I'm running these strips in series. So two, two 27 volt strips in series, 54 volts, it's covered great. The only thing is it's only running at 850 milliamps with this cool little driver on here. So, but this looks really cool, it's fantastic. Um, you can also do the same thing with PLC heats, PLC heat sinks. Got a PLC sink here, same driver hooked up on top. This this is great for down lighting, but for side lighting applications, uh, this 80-20 extrusion, this the th the single sided flat is uh, bar none. Really, really cannot compete with it. The way you can hang it, everything is uh, real nice. Um, but there's there's plenty of driver options. So the long long story short is a single strip here. Best way to run them is in is in series, so that you have a 54 volt strip. Now, for this little project that we're running here, I'm going to attach another, basically build two of these. I have this one already built up. We're going to build another one right here, and uh, we're literally going to just side saddle strap it right here so we have light shooting out towards you guys and out light shooting back towards me. Um, we're going to do that because we need the bulk of these heat sinks to cool what we're going to do. Um, my plan is to run it on a... This is an HLG 120H-C 1400B, 
Um, it says 120, but these are capable of 150 watts basically. And it does exactly 108 volts, which is exactly what we need. I've ran four strips off this before, it works quite well. The only issue to this is it does not dim to off. As you can see, this nice little ERP driver dim with Trollmaster. Obviously you could use a uh, normal, um, a normal timer setup, it's not the end of the world. It's just in today's day and age when drivers don't dim to off and you can't control them through zero to 10 or PWM or something. Oh, we're spoiled in today's life, but uh, but so be it. Not the end of the world there. Okay, just kept catching up with chat again. Um, someone said it froze, but seems to be fine. Very good. Okay, good. Yep, using the uh, the regular camera and the mic for this, so it should be fairly decent quality. But anyway, um, without further ado, let's get... Well, I guess I kind of need strip number one. Okay, driver's gone. So the concept, we already have one built up, ready to go. I'm using, unfortunately, I don't have the proper, again, this is a spur of the moment build, but the proper thing to connect these two bars is just a, it's simply a flat piece with two screws in each. I don't quite have that, so we're gonna be using, out of these little brackets that I do have, these little corner hinge brackets for connecting it, um, we're going to be making a slight, called an interesting piece, uh, to connect these two pieces together, but uh, nonetheless, it'll be fine. Before we do, we need to attach photo boost strips to the platform. We're going to be using, especially for a build like this, we're going to be using thermal tape. Uh, generic eBay, Amazon thermal tape works great. Um, for these, most boards these days are pretty good thermally. Um, not too much going on on them that they're going to have to worry about. They're designed pretty well. They're thick aluminum and uh, their recommended power dissipation is within line of what it should be. Not to mention we're using 301B diodes and whatnot that are running 60-70% uh, wall plate efficiency so there's very little heat coming out of it. So put some thermal tape on, make sure it goes on well. Cut off the excess. Okay, just make sure there's no major air bubbles in the back of the tape. Try to push out as many as you can. Sometimes they'll just be in there. Um, it's not going to kill it, but you know, get it, get as much out as possible. And then just peel the tape as best you can. Uh, I currently have this design set up. It's a 46-inch um, piece of what you call it of extrusion. It's a 46 inch piece of extrusion and I have a half inch offset coming in from each side. It's not really important but people are going to ask the littlest things and that's what we got going. So next strip here. Trying to 
pull up chat to keep up. Oh, on these 14, um, on these extrusions, they can actually, I've tested them up to 1.9 amps with no issue, honestly. Um, they cool, honestly, pretty much as good as the PLC heat sinks do. They're a little heavier, which makes sense. They've got more thermal mass, and is why they're doing it, compared to more surface area and a little lighter. But um, but overall, this is like a great alternative for heat sinks. And if it just comes out to a heavier build. That's what, that's the only issue I have with these things, is if you're building like a whole eight heat sink build, 16 strip build, they're just a little heavy for the project, in my opinion. So um, there's that to think about. But but yeah, they, uh, they can cool 1400, no problem on these things. Um, I'm curious how it's gonna do with these ones back to back. In the 14, I'm comfortable with. I'm not. I'm not worried about running them at 14. Um, but any more than that, I'd watch out. Okay. All right, so boards more or less adhered on the uh, on the strip. Just apply as much pressure around the diodes on the board as possible. You can only do as good as you can do. Um, but this is plenty to hold them on. I've never had any issue with cheap thermal tape or good thermal tape. Honestly, good thermal tape has given me or more issues than cheap thermal tape. Um, so take that for what it's worth. So I'm going to be connecting these boards. In series right here. So how I have them wired up is opposing. So right here we have a positive and on the right directly across from it, we have a negative. So I can go straight from positive to negative, put these in series and these two remaining right here so bright it just doesn't want to correct for this so anyway we go pop we go positive to negative and that leaves this one positive and this one negative open for uh, to wire with so now we have two matching two matching put them together got boards on the outside there boards on the outside there Okay, like I said, I'm using this little ghetto thing that I rigged up to put them together, but if you just go on to 8020 or anything, you can figure it out. And right there, we are going to put it, how do we want to run this? I guess we're going to run that in the center. So we will run these towards the end out here. Okay. And I have another one around here somewhere, I promise, right here. Okay. Just like that, you can see, like I said, it's a little janky. Instead of being flat like the actual piece I do, it's got this little fin here. It is what it is. Um, but two of them. One there. One there. And we have a perfectly uh, nice hanging twin bar. And it's almost big enough. Almost big enough to fit this mean well on there. There's not... 
there's not much overhang. If you look, we're probably at about, I don't know, maybe a quarter inch on each side, maybe a little less than a quarter inch. It's not too bad. So for this build, that'll work fine. And how I'm gonna mount them in here is, damn, that's not centered, son of a bitch. Hmm, okay. So of course, there's a, on, it, on most drivers, you usually have three options. You got two open, open U's and then a closed one. Um, these two open ones are just ever so not quite for the size of these two slots here. So gonna have to, gonna have to figure that one out, but that's fine. You know, just ever so slightly cross it a little bit. Yeah, I guess we'll do it that way. Okay. Grow with Sciences in here? Where? It would be fantastic, guys. We all understand. If PLC just offered a kit with all these brilliant ideas in there, it would be nice. But fortunately, not everyone is on board with everything there right now. So. also takes money to do that and the other thing is if people don't don't realize is there's not one single full-time employee at PLC um, and not one there's actually not one single paid employee at PLC believe that or not contract manufacturers some things but uh, overall no one's taking a check from them so some stuff doesn't move as quick as they'd like some issues but uh, you know, the mission of that company was to create high efficiency and available LED technology at the time was not really there. Now you can get them from uh, everyone and your brother's got a pretty decent quality setup these days and buyers aren't getting just completely bamboozled like they were. And uh, that's working out nice. Okay. You gotta think, at one point, one point, one of the only options out there were Mars and uh, Sidley used to be used quite often. Sidley, Black Star, things like that. Um, names you don't quite hear as often because they've rebranded and some things, but nonetheless, Chinese manufacturers. Okay, there we go. We've got the driver wedged in there. We just use the same screws that we're using, some T-nut screws on there. Works great. So now we will take it and we will wire what we have. Yeah, that'll work. We'll go from this positive over here to this negative. Now we have a series. This is all of a sudden now went from two 54 volt setups. Now that we just wired these two in series across here from uh, here to here, this now is a 108 volt series, which that's exactly what this driver has right here. So we're going to take the, uh, I'll even do it. I even have some red wire for once. It's very rare that I have red wire. We will go from the positive terminal over here. And we'll create a lead to right there. And we will go, where do we put that black wire? It's okay, we've got more. Go from this negative terminal over here. And up to right there. Okay. 
Okay. Use some Legos. Positive to positive, negative to negative. I would have just put the driver lead straight to it, but these are six or uh, 14 gauge driver leads and they won't fit in the board. So just watch out what you're using when you're using it. Um, and we could probably wedge this down. Might just throw a zip tie across the center there. Might work out nice. Got the dimming leads ready to go. And for this, just take out the old power cord. Seems like it would work, right? It's always the fun part is when I build things live and it's like, eh, is it gonna fire up or is it not? All right, we got light, fuck yeah. Woo! Okay. So, um, let me get a dimmer thrown on here so we don't just blind ourselves all night long. Uh, yes, these strips can handle 2100 milliamps. Um, you got to be careful on the heat sink. So the heat, the, the, the only heat sink I can recommend is the PLC heat sink. So, um, whether it be 46 inch or 23 inch, these will handle 2100 milliamps. They will run the diodes at 80 to 85 degrees C with no air movement. So that's within range, they're just running hot. Just know they're running hot. With a little, with an oscillating fan in the room. So I put these in a grow room environment, so we're talking like 28 to 30 degrees, you know, 28 degrees C ambient, upper ambient, they're running 80 to 85 degrees C on the diodes, the red diodes. White diodes run a little less. Um, with air movement, that dropped down to upper 50s, low 60s very quickly. So just, if you are gonna run these at 2100 milliamps, just make sure you have airflow. It doesn't have to be an actively cooled unit, just make sure you got airflow in the vicinity. It'll help out tremendously. Um, but yes, you can basically take eight strips, power them at 2100 milliamps. Yeah, the efficacy is not gonna be like world-class record breaking, but it's still gonna be like 2.4, 2.5. Um, it's good enough. It's better than a lot of things out there. And, uh, Obviously, it costs a lot less to do that. So, yes, that's totally doable. Um, no problems doing that. Anyway, here it is. This is the 150-watt uh, side light. Goddamn thing off there. So, we're running 150 strip is cool, obviously, but this, yeah, that's pretty bitchin', eh? Hell, you could run it vertically. You could run it vertically, and it could be... It's bulb-esque. We could say this is bulb-esque. Very long bulb-esque. Like your Schwartz is as big as mine bulb-esque. Uh, strips will be back in stock in a couple weeks. So the, the big holdup on the strips was is we get about six months worth of, sh worth of PCBs in at a time. We then have a schedule production of diodes we get from Samsung and Cree where they know our schedule and we pull each month. Um, but anyway, the diodes, Chinese New Year happy. We're trying to get them, or excuse me, not the diodes, the boards, the PCBs, the actual PCBs. We're trying to get those shipped out before Chinese New Year, which was like January 19th this year, very, very early this year. Well, that didn't happen. Chinese New Year came. Oh, well, we still had planned, had it planned. Um, then COVID-19, coronavirus, whatever you want to call it. That basically followed right back up to um, Chinese New Year, and China was shut down. Now we're shut down. China's kind of back up and running. Uh, at that time, China was shut down. We didn't get boards, and that was the big delay what, what got them. We just shipped out. Almost everyone should have their photo boost tracking um, all Okay, I was just told that the stream dropped out, but I was also told we're back up. So anyway, 
two to three weeks. Um, all components are going to the assembly factory this week, probably get out by Wednesday. Uh, then they need like a week to make them and then another week to ship them back and we'll have more strips. And at that point we'll be back in stock, not unstocked, it'll be a good point, which is where we wanted to be come the first of the year, but um, you know, it is what it is. Yes, it did freeze guys, it just dropped connection. I It did freeze, it should come back. Um, you shouldn't have to do anything. Yeah, we're good, we're good. Hope I sanitize. This is this is what uh, 2020 flex looks like right here, guys. Uh, yeah. 99%. <laughs> Got alcohol for days. But um, anyway, I'm glad this worked out. This actually worked out very nice. I thought this driver was going to be a little bulky for it, and I am bummed this one doesn't dim to off. But there are drivers out there like the, you know, you just, I just showed you guys, this is called the ERP PSB. It's a programmable up to 50 watt driver. Works really good. I wish they made a hundred water. Well, they don't quite make a hundred watt PSB, but they do make one called the SLM. This isn't exactly it. This is a engineering prototype, but it's basically just like this up to 160 watts out of this little driver here. Um, this thing fits on top of this bar perfectly. If I were to go to production or make this for people, I would be using the ERP SLM. Um, here, we can just go to it. I can show you guys shit like that right now. Um, so this is what it looks like, ERP SLM. Can go to the data sheet here and I would probably use for a single sided one, I would use a 1.7. And maybe dim it down a touch but honestly at 1.7 it'll survive and you just know you have that extra power on there um, otherwise I would go to this this 2.856 and I would run two 54 volt strips so each one of these 54 volts I would run two of those in parallel so 2800 milliamps since there's two in parallel we're gonna cut that in half each one of them would be running at 1400 milliamps it's absolutely perfect that would be the driver if I was gonna go to production with would be at SLM uh, 160 watt dash 2.8, which is 2.8 amps at 56 volts. Not programmable, not anything, but it doesn't have to be. That's absolutely perfect. Uh, that also, you could put a little 50 millimeter fan blowing on here. You could do some cool shit if you really wanted to, but uh, yes, that would be the one I would go to market with. You can get these, just put it on, uh, go to Octopart. You can figure it out where it's, who sells them, all that kind of shit. Um, Oh, you can only see the comments. That's a bummer. Okay, hold on. My my apologies, guys. What the hell happened? I don't want to see the comments. Hmm. Again, these are going to be more expensive. The meanwhile that I have right here on this bar is going to be cheap, readily available. It's going to be the, the most easy to come by, we'll say. Um, there are other options, but uh, it's probably going to be the easiest to come by. I might look into an Inv Invitronics, um, if you can get those sometimes. Those usually have dim to off capabilities. So maybe maybe go to that, but again, this ERP one is about this size, about fits in the palm of your hand. Fantastic, up to 160 watts. So I would be using, again, for a single sided one, Bam, 1.7, it's a little hot on the drive current, but you can dim it down, and even at 1.7, it's fine. Um, but ideally, this 162.856 ZA, meaning Z, zero to 10 volt dimmable, A, four kilovolt uh, surge, no big deal on that. I would like it to be a 10K surge, but that's fine. Such is life. Um, but that'll give us 2.8, if we run two strips on each side in parallel, or in series and then parallel the two strips together at the end, we'll have 54 volts and that 2.8 will get cut in half to 1.4. Okay, that you guys can see, I know you can see that. Yeah, so they were supposed to come out with a 100 watt PSB, 
it's called Draco 2. Um, that project got scrapped. They said it was going to be too late to market and too expensive, which I agree it probably will be. PSB is already a little bit expensive, but it's a great driver. It works, works well. Um, the SLM, if the SLM was programmable, it basically would be the higher wattage PSB that everyone wants. I don't know why they don't just make a programmable SLM. That's all they need to do. But yeah. Oh, it is what it is. But yeah, this thing came out very, very nice. Now, there are some things that I haven't quite finished with it yet, and that's how to hang it. Um, the easiest thing to do, uh, I just have to go to Home Depot and get them, is to get some quarter 20 screws, because all this hardware is just quarter inch screws. So you can get some quarter, tw quarter 20 uh, eye hooks and just put them right in the ends here, and you're good to go. Super, super easy. But yeah, that's it, boys and girls. Look how cool that is. Look how freaking cool that is. Now you shove this between each uh, four by eight tray. You four by every uh, or four by four tray. What we do is you could take extrusion like such, and you could add to the ends. So right here, you could attach this to the ends, like one on each end, per you know, just for shits and giggles. And then eventually, or essentially, it would be like a stand. And you could have a stand that sits on your trays. Instead of hanging this thing, this thing could actually sit on the trays. Now, just, you know, you could, should isolate it and ground it at that point. And there's some safety precautions to do. Um, but, you know, just the concept of what could, what could we do with this style build? What can you do with 80-20? What can you do with photo boost strips? Uh, really, the options and the possibilities are endless. That's the best part about it. Um, let's get the fuck out of there. I almost kind of like this little underlight effect we got going too. That's nice. But yeah, this turned out really nice. Very, very nice. I wish it dimmed off. See, this is so this is dimmed all the way down. You can see it's kind of in lip mode. It's kind of in flicker mode. This is this is an old driver. This driver is literally from 2014. This is stock. This is stock from when we were building CX 300s. Um, that's how old this driver is. I don't even know if it's still under warranty. Uh, anyway, works fine. They might even dim to off these days. Who knows? Chat, you guys are crazy. Okay. I believe that about wraps it up. I'm going to go hang this in the garden. You guys might see it on the next update. You might not. I might not put it in there yet until I need it. Um, but yeah, my plan is to go film a garden update since everyone flipped out today thinking, since I, I mean, I understand. I showed a garden last week. Was I, I was MIA for months. And then I showed a garden, and then I just posted a video today of what happened to the last garden. People are a little bit confused. So anyway, I need to go make a update so everyone knows what the heck is going on with the current run. And like I said, you might see this bad boy in there fairly soon. So not bad, sorry. May not have been the most fun video to be live for, um, but come back. You need to see how to build this, get some ideas, whatever you may need. I think it'll be a little easier for you guys to fast forward through. Um, anyway, thanks for hanging out, and I will see you guys later.